Hello friends, welcome back. Myself Pushpinder Singh and uh, we are going to start with our daily current affairs. So today you have 19th of July 2021. As you know that these lectures are useful for those who are preparing for the civil services examination which is conducted by the UPSC. All right. And we are specifically referring the two national newspapers like the Hindu and Indian Express. You should also read those uh, two newspapers, newspapers for your civil services examination which is most important, right? And uh, uh, let's begin with, this, with the lecture. Okay, so first news is all about the new quad grouping, right? So here, the USA President, Mr. Joe Biden, have recently been informed, right, to the world that a new quad grouping is going to form. And this would materialize the remaining task on the soil of Afghanistan in order to establish the peace and the security on the soil of Afghanistan. So this new quad grouping, right, consisting of the United States of America, Afghanistan, Pakistan and Uzbekistan. These four countries will consist of the new quad grouping. It will be the new quadrilateral diplomatic platform in order to, you know, in order to uh, basically assimilate a different task, right, in order to cooperate and coordinate for the purpose of enhancing the regional connectivity and the security for the purpose of uh, on the soil of Afghanistan. So the parties will consider, you know, uh, the long term peace and the stability in Afghanistan, which will be critical for the regional connectivity. And here, you know, the peace and the regional connectivities are mutually reinforcing. And that is what uh, these four countries are basically coming together for setting up of this, for setting up of this new quiet grouping. Right. So here, recognizing the historical opportunity to have, you know, the, the inter-regional trade routes, which basically passes through, right, specifically through the Afghanistan, the parties intend to cooperate to extend the trade, right, to build some sort of a links or the transit links to strengthen the business to the business ties, right, and to have this security related mechanism across the, across the region, right. The parties basically agree to meet, you know, uh, in the next few coming months to determine some sort of a, uh, the modalities of the cooperation, right, specifically for the purpose of establishment of the peace on the soil of Afghanistan, right, and, uh, you know, it is most important aspect of the USA also in the backdrop of the China which is also eyeing on the soil of uh, you know uh, Afghanistan after the retreat from uh, the Afghanistan by the by the USA so after USA the China is eyeing on the soil of Afghanistan as you know that uh, the Afghanistan which is the most important country strategically right for India also right if you see these parties would intend to cooperate the trade, the building the transit links as well as strengthen the business to business ties. If you see the map of the Afghanistan or the political map of the Afghanistan, the Afghanistan is also bordered by the Pakistan to the east and to the south, right? It is also bordered to the Iran to the west, the Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan to the north and China to the northeast also. So China is also most important party, but this new quad is does not consist of the China. Okay, this formation of new quad is very very important because here the China is basically also designing to extend its Belt and Road initiative into the Afghanistan. And once this vacuum is created by the retreat of you know the U.S. Army from Afghanistan, the China would get an opportunity to come into that, right? So it is located at the heart of the historic Silk Road, right? And definitely the Afghanistan was long a crossroad for the commerce between various Asian countries that connecting together you know with the euro so that will basically enhance the regional cultural and commercial contact by establishment of such quad or such new quad grouping so it's a very very important right and afghanistan can provide you know the china for the much needed strategic base right so in order to contain the china this quad is also the most important initiative right which was initiated by the president joe biden in that respect okay next the black carbon emissions carry coronavirus. So, uh, a recent study which was conducted by the Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology, which is based in Pune in the Maharashtra, have, have basically suggested that the COVID-19 pandemic is something which may be related to, uh, you know, the, the stubble burning, right, where the farmers basically burn their stubbles after their crop, 
so here the black carbon so the black soot right so the particulate matter 2.5 consisting of some black carbon right which is often called a soot so right this soot basically consisting of the polycyclic you know aromatic hydrocarbons which can carry this covid 19 virus so this covid 19 virus can piggybacks only on the black carbons during the biomass burning or during the stubble burning right here the not all particulate matter 2.5 can carry this covid 19 virus so it's a very very important aspect the study which is published by published in the journal which is known as Elsevier, right it is based on the data which is collected from the delhi right specifically from the september to the december 2020 right and here the 24 average of a 24 hour average of the particulate matter right uh, 2.5 as well as the black carbon was basically taken for the purpose of the study so it's a very very important and here the particulate matter 2.5 that we are talking specifically is those particles you know that can penetrate deep inside your body through the inhalation right and that can basically you know inflame or that can cause some sort of inflammation in your lungs in your respiratory tracts right and that can lead to some sort of a risk like cardiovascular diseases respiratory problems lung, lung related infections and that can uh, that can you know reduce your immunity also so here the the particulate matter 2.5 that we are talking right is basically consisting of this black carbon right so bc suggesting here is that the black carbon so particulate matter 2.5 basically consisting of this black carbon which consisting of the polycyclic aromatic uh, the hydrocarbon so here almost 40 percent of this black carbon emissions are basically attributed to this open biomass burning that basically farmers are resorted to right and uh, almost 40 percent remaining is let is because of the fossil fuels burning so you can say that the 40 percent coming out from the biomass burning that is basically specifically done by the farmers 40 percent basically through the fossil fuels burning and remaining 20 percent basically comes from the biofuel burning so here the aged biomass that we are talking right consisting of this particulate matter or black black carbon or you know this black carbon particles that tends to aggregate together right they react themselves with other compounds also right and uh, they grow in the size in that process and you know that can inhabit temporarily the virus or novel coronavirus that lead to the rapid increase of the COVID-19 cases in our country, right? And um, you might have seen also the cases were declined after the crop burning was stopped. That means the crop burning which ultimately led to, you know, the generation of this black carbons, right? Which has basically become a reservoir or, you know, a carrier for this novel coronavirus to across the region, right? So researchers basically found, uh, you know, the concentration of this black carbon directly correspond to the speed at which the infections basically spread right across the region on the onset of winter right when uh, the farmers basically sorted to the stubble burning during that period and it has been reduced after that with the declining of the trend with the reduction of this the stubble burning fire so that has been closely corresponded to the stubble burning so here the surge of this black carbon emissions are directly linked to uh, you know to the additional contribution of uh, uh, you know uh, the you know particulate matter 2.5 concentration which basically carry the covid uh, the sars cov 2 virus so highest number of cases that has been found in places like you know the maharashtra delhi rajasthan tamil nadu up andhra pradesh telangana that is basically related to the high amount of stubble burning in that particular region so it's a very very important aspect and it's very very important also the study also confirmed that one okay then the first ever study on the cove shield right about its efficacy so this is one such study right which is conducted by the serum institute of india right so the cove shield which is the one uh, you know vaccine which has been currently been administered to the citizens of this country shows 63 percent overall efficacy rate right in our country as well as if you have if you have you know the cove shield have been successful in terms of preventing the severe covid infections in 81 percent of the cases so that means in terms of the prevention of this severe covid 19 infection the vaccine having the effic efficacy of around 81 percentage if the people have taken the two doses completely or the people are fully vaccinated so this is one such study which is basically shows the 
uh, the co shield efficacy right even during that point of the time when the delta strain is dominating the second wave so this is basically the study is now under submission to the lancet which is a, a renowned journal so here the transnational health science and technology which has been located in faridabad along with the council of scientific and industrial research the institute of genomics and integrated biology which is you know along with the national institute of immunology and national consortium of covid 19 research all these institutes basically come together to work on this study and according to that study right you know the cell meritated uh, you know this immunity uh, despite of uh, the ability of this delta strain to reduce the antibody antibody led immune system so this study basically shows that a complete vaccination with cov shield have successfully prevented or protected the people you know from the severe covid 19 infection so that as it has been given over here right and the study also shows that that the complete vaccination with the cov shield have successfully prevented and uh, but it has some uh, some cautions to to take place it has added that there was significant drop in the antibody led immune response to the delta variant but the cell mediated immunity was maintained in the covid 19 vaccine recipient so it also mentioned that the protection against the severe infection is due to this cell mediated immunity so uh, you know uh, it, this study also mentioned about the t cell about the t cell response right during the severe covid 19 infections so it mentioned that the t cell responses were preserved against the recombo the recombinant mutant receptors and the t cells basically help the binding you know domain antigens to push for the cell mediated immune re immune response to the delta virus and which is basically helping controlling or the protecting the citizens specifically from the sars to co2 virus next the bezos to blast off into the space so recently you might have seen in the last 2 3 days back when you know the virgin galactic founder right so one spacecraft that is virgin galactic right was basically you know reached to right uh, to the to the to the basically you know uh, the karman line which is considered as a boundary between you know uh, to the topmost boundary you know between the earth atmosphere and the space all right so the virgin atlantic founder mr richard branson right have taken the sortie to the karman line and after that the jeff bezos which is the founder of the amazon which is also richest person in the world is set to join the league of the you know the virgin galactic or the richard branson right after that to uh, to join this astronaut club on the 20th july 2021 to become you know uh, the first crew you know the launch by the blue origin right to reach to you know again to the karman line specifically right and it will be the biggest boost for the tourism industry specifically from the soil of usa so it is this mission which has been announced by the blue origin right to go to that space to reach to the uh, you know to the karman line so the blue origin that we talk about the jeff bezos basically founded this blue origin you know back in 2000 and the main purpose of founding of this you know uh, this blue origin is you know some sort of a setting up of this floating space colonies that you might have seen in the movies right so some space colonies will be set up which will be between floating with artificial gravity where the millions of the people would work and would live over there right and today this company is developing some sort of a heavy lift rocket right which we call them a glen so glen is basically developed by the origin black or blue origin right and which is also developing the moon lander and hoping to have some contract with the nasa right for collaboration for this space journey so this crew along with jeff bezos will spend around few minutes right beyond the karman line which has been recently been or uh, which has been discovered or which has been internationally recognized a boundary between the earth atmosphere and the space that is from the earth surface if you go up around 100 kilometers right to the space that is basically a boundary which is known as the karman line which is known as the karman line which has been established as a boundary between the earth atmosphere and the space so that is around 62 miles or around correspond to 100 kilometers 
and the space craft which would carry uh, you know the astronauts along with the bejos would reach to the kerman line and even beyond that up to 106 kilometers and they will spend a few minutes after that right and they will be able to admire the curvature of the planet in that sortie right and here you know uh, they will be able to visualize and further that the booster will ultimately return to the landing pad autonomously right so that will be the best and the capsule basically free falls back to the earth through this uh, you know uh, through this sortie before deploying the three giant parachutes and finally the thruster to land gently on you know uh, the texas desert where the same location where this spacecraft will basically take off so here you know it's a most important aspect of the space tourism and you know the Elon Musk SpaceX will also be in the line to have this contribution specifically in this space tourism so it's a very very important aspect related to the space tourism that the Jeff Bezos is basically involved in that next NB driver so here the researchers at IIT Madras or Indian Institute of Technology Madras have recently been developed the artificial intelligence tool which have been named as the NB driver right which is also known as the neighborhood driver right this NB driver or the artificial intelligence tool right would be used in analyzing the cancer causing mutations in the cell so this will be the best artificial intelligence tool to to analyze the cancer causing mutations as you know that the Indian Institute of researchers have developed this uh, the artificial intelligence based mathematical model right and this they basically use some sort of an algorithm algorithm to uh, to uh, to have some technique of levering this dna composition to pinpoint the genetic alteration which is responsible for the cancer progression in the basically in the patients right so as you know that the cancer is basically caused due to uncontrolled growth of the cell which is driven mainly by genetic alterations right and in the recent year because of high you know thought put dna sequencing have revolutionized the area of the cancer research by enabling some sort of a measurements of these alterations but due to some sort of a complexity and you know the size of the sequencing database pinpointing the exact change from this uh, from this genomes of the cancer patients is notoriously is very very difficult okay so this research which has been led by iit madras right is the one of the most important research to develop this uh, this artificial artificial intelligence based mathematical tool right it's a uh, it's a one of the biggest challenge faced by the cancer researchers across the country right which involve the differentiation between uh, you know uh, the driver mutations which is comparatively the relatively small in number right which will enable the cancer cells to grow right as well as the pencil the passenger mutations right where the passenger mutations are basically uh, are found in the larger in the number that do not have any effect on the progression of the disease so by looking into the neighborhood or the context of the mutations in the genome right it can look into the harmful driver mutations and distinguishing with the neutral passenger mutations right which does not have any effect on the passenger uh, on the progression of the disease so it's a vital role uh, in the tumor progression specifically in the tumor development and you know the computational prioritization of the cancer driver mutations is an active area of the research and understanding this underlying mechanism of these alterations would definitely help to identify the most appropriate treatment strategy right uh, uh, which is basically also known as the precision oncology right specifically and that will you know enable the doctors or the medical fraternity to analyze the dna sequences from the large group of cancer patients comparing the sequence from the cancer as well as other normal cells and to determine whether a particular mutation occurs more often in the cancer cells than random right so this will definitely a technique which will help in you know looking at the genomic neighborhood to make out the nature of the mutations which is a novel and which is basically the largely unexplored one so the nature of the mutations where the particularly the detecting of these driver mutations okay particularly the rare ones is an exceptionally difficult task okay and uh, the development of such method can ultimately accelerate the early diagnosis of the cancers and the development of the personalized personalized therapies to the cancer patients 
okay so here the mutations or the nature of the mutations depends on the neighborhood and how this tool may be used to draw the line between the driver mutations and the passenger mutations the driver mutation basically carry out those cancer cells and that will basically also development help in the development of those cancer cells so that matter would definitely distinguish between these driver mutations and the passenger mutations that are looking at by this neighborhood is, a, is of the noble importance for that purpose next the tipu sultan so here right the brahman mumbai municipal corporation or bmc have caught in the controversy right uh, which is basically going to attempt to rename a garden after tipu sultan right specifically in the suburb of the eastern mumbai so as you know that the tipu sultan has no role to play in the maharashtra which is around thousands kilometer from the mysore right where the tipu sultan was once ruled right uh, even the bmc municipal corporation was trying to attempt to name that garden after him in govandi which is the you know the suburb in eastern mumbai have caught in the controversy so here the tipu sultan which was born in 1750 and died in 1790 99 uh, he was the great ruler of the kingdom of mysore which is based in southern india and he was also the pioneer in rocket artillery and he was one of the most important ruler who believes in the modernization of the arsenals okay and he introduced a number of administrative innovations right during their rules during his rules specifically to tackle the britishers challenge right for example he has included the new coinage system right in his mysore kingdom he introduced the new calendar he introduced the new land revenue system right and which has basically you know progress or which has led to the growth of the mysore silk industry in that area right he has also expanded the rockets specifically the iron cased mysorean rockets and commissioned the military manual which is known as the fatul mujahideen okay uh, tipu sultan's father the great hyder ali rose to the power and uh, the tipu sultan ultimately succeed him after his father's death in 1782 and he the tipu sultan have won the important victories or the most uh, greatest victories against the british specifically in the second anglo mysore war and because of his victory he has negotiated the 191784 the treaty of mangalore with the britishers okay and the tipus has various conflict with the neighbors also for example the tipu has fought the war with the with the marathas so here the maratha mysore war was basically fought and which has ultimately ended in the signing of the treaty of the gazindrad and ultimately in the third anglo mysore war which is basically fought between the mysore as well as the britishers right the tipu sultan was basically forced to sign the treaty of saring patnam and because of this treaty of saring patnam he lost almost you know uh, you know losing number of the previously conquered territories to the britishers right in the fourth anglo mysore war where you know the combined forces of the british east india company along with the marathas and the nizam of hyderabad right both fought together with the tipu sultan have you know ultimately the tipu sultan have defeated and he was ultimately killed on 4th may 1799 and uh, while defending stronghold at saring patnam right so he was a great administrator and he believes that better to live a one day as a tiger than to live a thousands of the year as a sheep right it was a great quotation given by the tipu sultan okay next mh 60r helicopters so here the us navy have handed over the two you know uh, the mh 60r helicopters to the indian navy so here the indian navy have expect accepted the first two of the helicopter which is known as ms 60r the multi role helicopters or mrh helicopters from the us navy right at the the brief ceremony which have been commissioned or which have been held at the naval air station which is located at northern island in the san diego on 16th of july 2021 right so this mhr uh, helicopters or the multi role helicopters are manufactured by the lockheed martin corporation in the usa which is an all weather helicopters and which is designed to support the multiple missions of indian navy so it is also will be fitted with the state of art avionics and the sensors to equip the indian navy with all modern facilities of the warfare right 24 such helicopters are basically procured under the foreign military sales from the us from the us government to the indian government right and the helicopters will be also be modified along with the unique equipments and the weapons which is been needed 
to defend the Indian territory, right? So here, the introduction of this MRH or multi-role helicopters would definitely further strengthen the Indian Navy's capabilities, specifically the three-dimensional capabilities to defend, right, the Indian territories. In order, in order to exploit these potent helicopters, right, uh, the first batch of Indian pilots or Indian crews basically presently undergoing the training in the USA to fly those sorties of MS MS4. So these are basically multi-road helicopters, which are all-weather fatigue helicopters, which has been currently being handed over to the Indian Navy. Okay. Next, the Abbas Parsambar. Here, the Pradhan Mantri Abbas Yojana Urban, which have been launched, right, to have you know the vision of or the Prime Minister Narendra Modi's vision of the housing for all by 2024. So here, the Pradhan Mantri Abbas Yojana Urban or PMA by you have launched the Abbas Parsambar series. The Avas per Samwat series is basically something consisting of the 75 seminars and the workshops. These 75 seminars and the workshops will be taken place across the countries in the premier institutions. So this Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs have announced on the occasion of the 6th anniversary of the Prime Minister Avas Yojana Urban on June 25, 2021. And here the Avas per Samwat Urban Right, uh, Abbas Prasambhat, which is a series of seminars and the workshop that will be conducted, right, uh, which is basically related to creation of the awareness, promotion of the dis discussions, deliberations, disseminations for the housing for all. And it is along with the Prime Minister Narendra Modi's vision of the housing for all. And here the various stakeholders belong to various across the various domains, right, will basically participate like the engineers, the urban community development managers, the, the the planning, you know, uh, you know, managers, the finance, you know, all such people, all such stakeholders will basically participate to have the view on the Avas Prasama. So it's just a seminar and the workshops that will disseminate the information and that will also deliberate over how efficiently we can proceed further. So it will be done through 75 nationwide workshops and the seminars that will be conducted between the July 1st to September 30, 2021. So this is the time period almost, you know, uh, three months from July 1st to September 30, where the 75 nationwide workshops and the seminars will be conducted. It will be conducted in the prestigious educational institutions, right, as well as the primary lending institutions, right, uh, with the association or with the active help of the state and the union territories, right. And these workshops will be held both offline and the online mode. Right, and while conducting these workshops or the seminars or the offline mode, all such precautions which has been related to the COVID-19 will be followed. Right, so here yeah, the Ministry of Housing and Urban uh, uh, Affairs have issued the certificate for the participation of the participants who will ultimately participate in these seminars or the workshops. Okay, next you have the Kushyonka Asiana. Again, the Pradhan Mantri Abbas Yojana Urban have launched. This Kushyonka Ashiana, which is a short film contest, right, to take ahead of the Prime Minister Narendra Modi's vision of housing for all by 2022. See here, the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs have announced, right, specifically on the 60th, on the sixth, on the sixth anniversary of the Prime Minister Avas Yojana on June 25th, 2021. Okay, specifically in this, uh, the Kushyonka Ashiana short film contest, right, the applications are invited for the Prime Minister Avas Yojana Urban, beneficiaries, the students, to the youth, to the members of the civil society, to the institutions, to the individual groups, right, specifically, right, specifically to cut across this six years journey of Prime Minister Avas Yojana Urban, right, and how this Prime Minister Avas Yojana Urban have impacted the lives of the people, how they have transformed the life of the people, how they have, you know, impacted and empowered, empowered the people, right, how they have enabled the empowerment across the, across the country specifically to that respect and here in this competition all Indian nationals which are above the age of 18 right will be able to participate and uh, the final date for the submission is September 1st so here the results for that purpose will be declared on the September 30 2021 right and after submission there will be a jury that jury will ultimately select the 25 such winners right these 25 winners will be awarded or will be rewarded or will be segregated into the three categories right the topmost prize will be give, the topmost award awardee will be given the prize of around 25000 inr the second most winners will be given 
you know the prize of around 20000 inr the third you know third winners will be given the inr of around 12500 rupees right they all will be awarded also with a certificate right so this is a great step in order to in order to disseminate the awareness and information across the people okay next the kadambini ganguli so here the google have celebrated the kadambini ganguli's 160th birthday okay with the doodle right specifically on its home page so it's a very very important on 18 july 2021 the google have celebrated the kadambini ganguli's ganguli's 160th birthday right the kadambini ganguli was basically a female doctor or, the, or one of the first female doctors who was basically born in 1861 and she died in 1923 right and who basically practiced with the degree in the western medicine so she has basically also studied in uh, you know trained in the scotland as well as other western countries so she practiced the western medicine along with uh, the pioneer women like the anandi ben joshi so the ganguli was or the kadambini ganguli was the first woman to gain the admission in the calcutta medical college in 1884 and subsequently she was also trained in the scotland and uh, she was also you know having the degree in western medicine or practice with a degree in western medicine specifically uh, successfully establishing the medical practice in our country okay and the kadambini ganguli basically started her career at the banga mahila vidyalaya right and later she also studied at the benthul school in the benthul in 1878 and she became the first woman to uh, to pass the university of calcutta entrance examination with that respect right and um, in, in her great effort right the benthul college first introduced the fine arts and the graduation courses in 1883 so she has also greatest contributed for the development of education system specifically for introduction of the various courses at the benthul colleges like the fine arts and the graduation courses right uh, the kadambari ganguli as well as the chandramukhi basu both have become the first graduates from the benthul college subsequently and in that in that process she become the first female graduate in the country and which is also the entire british empire so she was the first graduate from the benthul college after their setting up so she was basically a kadambari ganguli okay next gender sensitization of the police personnel so here you have lot of issues like you know uh, the police is basically you know the gender insensitive while uh, you know the treating with the women specifically you know while uh, inquiring or while you know uh, asking some questions related to the women so here the national commission for the women have signed a memorandum of understanding with the bureau of police research and the development right for the gender sensitization drive of the police personnel across the country this gender sensitization drive of the police personnel will definitely help in the handling of some sort of the sensitive cases which is related to uh, the female right how to treat them how to how to interrogate them right and how to handle those cases with the gender sensitization the sensitization of those people specifically the male persons would definitely help in you know controlling the crime specifically against the women so objective of this plan is to ensure the gender sensitization training to the police personnel right with respect to you know already established the legislations right already present legislations and the policies which are concerning related to the women right and this gender sensitization training would also help in you know the bringing attitudinal changes behavioral changes in the police personnel right while dealing the crimes against the women so this changes in terms of attitude and the behavior would definitely try to control the crime against the women so here uh, this sensitization training would also involve in the training module this training module would be having the duration of around 35 days okay and here this would be a residential mode or the residential training mode will be there and that will involve the short intense course okay with will having approximately around 18 to 24 hours in total so that is basically run across the 35 days for that census sensitization training and specific specific focus for gender sensitization would involve on the gender issues the women related laws 
right which are all already involved in the civil code in the criminal code in the civil procedure code as well as various other statute books right as well as it will also sensitize the most important implementing agencies right as well as as well as it will also try to share the best practices which have been carried out across the world right related to the handling of the cases against the women right so gender sensitization would definitely help in achievement of the comparatively lesser amount of crime against the women right here let us understand about the national commission for the women as you know that the nation commission for the women was basically setting up of under the nation commission for the women act 1990 so it has been passed by the parliament this has been passed by the parliament okay in 1990 right and ultimately the nation commission for the women was set up in 1992 so in that respect it is a statutory body it has been a statutory body because it has been set up by the act of the parliament right and what is the purpose of the nation commission for the women it is a apex national level organization right its the main purpose is to protect the interest of the women to safeguard right all such you know uh, the interest as well as the rights which is been given to the women right uh, because of the constitutions and the national commission for the women works under the aegis of the ministry of women and the child development under the government of india so it's a important body to safeguard you know the interest of the women to safeguard the, the you know uh, the most important you know uh, the rights which is been given by the constitution of our country to the women right and it will also try to investigate the cases which is related to the crimes against the women it is a statutory body which have been formed under the nation commission of the women act 1990 right so here you can see that the memorandum of understanding was signed between the nation commission for the women as well as the bureau of police research and development right which has been signed at new delhi all right so that's all for today thank you very much and we'll meet again tomorrow for our next current affairs thank you